If you're in need of several custom sized easels that are rustic and simple and inexpensive, check out these four that I recently made. They went together very quick and easy and were under $10 a piece. The material I chose to use are called furring strips. They are very roughly cut and have lots of imperfections, which is really perfect for a rustic look, and also that makes them very affordable. I ended up using these 1x2x8s and they were less than $2 a piece. You are going to need three furring strips per easel. I took a few minutes to lay out various sizes and signs and configurations just to determine what angles I would want my easels to have. And that's something that can be adjusted to your needs as well. And once you have the angles the way you like it, carefully take one of the side pieces of wood and push it straight forward. And now place a straight edge on that center 90 degree piece of wood and draw a line straight up on your side piece. That is your cut line. Now how you cut that piece is determined by what tools you have available and what you feel comfortable with. I thought I was gonna use my skill saw, but that really did not work very well for me. I couldn't see the line and I ended up being very inaccurate with my cut. In hindsight, I probably should have just used my jigsaw next or used a handheld saw, but instead I went on to my miter saw, which was not the easiest. Cutting a long, narrow, skinny piece of wood on a miter saw can be quite challenging. If you've ever tried this, um, it's probably actually a little dangerous. That being said, I could set the angle, I could make quick cuts, I still had to call my husband in to help me hold the piece and use a scrap piece of wood to cover that long gap on my fence plate. Ultimately, I probably wouldn't recommend this. So here's how my setup looked with the scrap piece in the back and it ended up being about a 14 degree angle so we just got busy cutting and like I said, my husband had to hold it for me. Whatever cutting method you end up choosing for yourself, I highly recommend that you get these angles cut correctly before you cut the pieces to their length. That way, if you make any mistakes, you haven't lost a lot of the wood that you bought. And once I had my angles cut, I just removed that little skinny tip from there. You don't have to do that, I just liked how that looked better. And now you can cut your pieces to the height that you want your easel to be. I started out with all of them at six foot, but then I did adjust a couple of them to be quite a bit smaller than that. It's totally up to you. And definitely keep those pieces that you're cutting off the eight foot boards because you'll use those for the display ledge. To connect my three pieces, I used hex bolts. They have threading at one end and are smooth in the middle, which allows that middle piece of your easel to swing back. Altogether, the nuts, bolts, and washers were just a little over $3. With all three ends in position, take a straight edge and mark a line where the three pieces are widest and connect and then continue that middle line right to the center and that's where you're going to drill your first hole. Use a quarter inch drill bit and drill your first hole in the center piece. Next you want to clamp that center piece to one of the outside edge pieces and continue that hole straight through. And when that's done, unclamp and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. And now you're ready to connect with the hex bolt. you drilled were a little bit off you might have to hammer it in this was the only one that I had to do that with all the rest were pretty easy to put through and now 
now just repeat this process on all your other easels. And next you can determine where you want your ledge to be located that's going to hold the artwork. There's no right or wrong answer to this, it's really your choice. I had plenty of leftover scrap pieces from my first cuts, so I decided to do one piece straight across flat, and then I took a second piece and turned it sideways so that my ledge was just a little bit wider to hold the signs that I had. Now I did connect all of this together with my nail gun, but you could definitely use a hammer and nails, some glue, screws, really whatever you have available. At this point I did decide to take about two inches or so off of that back center leg. I just felt like it gave the easel a nicer lean, so I drew a level line and cut with my jigsaw. And here's where I decided the jigsaw would have worked much better for my earlier cuts as well. And the final thing that you really should do to complete your easel is to connect some sort of string or chain from the front of the easel to that back center leg so that it doesn't go falling flat. I use jute string because that's just what I happen to have laying around. To connect the string to the front piece, I did use these picture hanger D-rings. I had those around as well. I thought they were a good solution so that the jute string wouldn't show on the front, but you could just drill a hole straight through and then tie a big knot on the front side. Then with the jute string in place, I drilled a quarter inch hole through that back center leg. At this point, you could consider yourself finished with the easels and anything more you do is completely up to you. Now I cut down one of my easels because I turned the chalkboard sideways. I also needed to make a head table easel. This was going to be the exact height of the table. The sign for this was also a wider sign, so I made it a wider angle than the others. I think it was about a 30 degree angle. I also had its ledge hang over the side pieces. Staining or painting your easels is another optional step. I tried a little bit of both and liked the white best. And with some of the leftover scrap wood, I was able to add just a small little piece at the top that could hold a hook, which helped with adding some greenery and wreaths and other embellishments. I'm so glad I took the time to make these custom easels. They are rustic, they are the perfect size, they're exactly what we needed for these custom signs and they will be the perfect touch to a beautiful day.